This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Well, get those paint brushes, get all those different paint colors, get ready to start mixing them together on your palette and start painting some happy little trees. Because today we're gonna be talking about Bob Ross, the Art of Chill game. This is for two to four players. Uh, so let's take a look. I picked this up at Gen Con. I had only heard about it about the day before, got really excited. So let's take a look. <music> At the beginning of the game, everyone's gonna pick a color and get a palette uh, with Bob Ross's signature on it and a color. So in this case, I would be red. You also get an easel and you get 15 double-sided boards that have some of his different paintings on there. So there's a total of 30 paintings and you go through maybe two or three of these per game. And you're gonna be painting things like my favorite, happy little trees, maybe some fluffy clouds, maybe some charming cabins. Now this is a racing game, you're trying to get chill points all the way to the end through the color palette to get to chill. The first one there is the winner. And here's the different things you'll be painting as I mentioned before, but there's also all money mountains and wondrous waters. Now on your turn, you're going to roll a dice and then you're gonna have three actions. Now this game is about painting. So a lot of times you're gonna be gathering art supplies. And these cards have two things on them. They have paint and brushes. You're gonna need a brush to paint and many paints to paint. And they have the official colors that he used to use, like Thalo Blue, Sap Green, Van Dyke Brown. And for an action, you can grab one of these paints and add it to your hand. So let's say I want uh, the Sap Green. And let's say this, I could grab this and put it in my hand. That would be one action and it would get replaced. Let's say I want the Van Dyke Brown. I could grab this and put it in my hand and go here. Now, if you grab a wild, it counts as two if it's face up. So I couldn't grab this now because I've already used two of my three actions. I can also pull one off the top if I don't like what I have, but I actually like the cadmium yellow and I would get this and it would then be the next player's turn. Now on a subsequent turn, I can take cards from my hand and add them to my palette. There's two sides, A and B. Sometimes you'll be using both at the same time. Once a color is placed there, uh, it's there until you specifically remove it. So I'm gonna have cadmium yellow, I'm gonna add Van Dyke Brown, I'm gonna add sap green. Now that's three actions, so that would have taken up my whole turn. So on a subsequent turn, I might be able to paint. So let's say I had all this in a palette. Now this could even have been actually over here as well. I'll tell you about this in just a moment. But let's say I have brown and yellow, because these are mixed together. So uh, I have brown and yellow and green. I'm gonna use both palettes to paint the happy little trees, but I need the fan brush. I have one in my hand. I play this card as an action to use the fan brush to paint this. So I take the brush and the colors. Now I have to have only the colors that are in here. I could not have any other color in either palette because once it's in a palette, they're, they're thought to be a, sort of mixed together. Now you can actually have additional cards of the same color and you could still paint this okay, but you cannot have different colors that aren't here. So here I have all the right colors. I play the brush. These would get discarded and I would paint it. You get one point for each paint color. So I got one, two, three. Now also this is happy little trees. Over the course of the game, I'll tell you why in a minute, Bob's gonna be moving up. If he has not yet painted happy trees himself, you'll get a bonus based upon this. So I got three points here and four points there. But I'm also that first one to paint happy little trees in this painting, so I'd also get another two. So now that was six points. And I would just simply move up on the chill meter. Another thing I can do on my turn is discard two identical cards of one of these technique cards and get it. So I could discard two palette knives from my hand for an action and I would take this palette knife and put it in front of me and then this would get replaced. Now this does two things. Number one, anytime you get a technique card, you get two chill points right away. Plus anytime I paint anything for the rest of the game that has a palette knife, I get an additional point. So it's long-term points. So now that you know the basics, let's talk about the die. At the beginning of your turn, you're gonna roll a die and something's gonna happen. Three out of six on the dice is Bob. When that happens, you're going to flip over an event. This says, hey, earn one extra chill point if you paint a feature with Thalo Blue this turn. Of course, this will stay here until somebody else rolls this. But also, every time Bob is rolled, he will move one to the right, unless the card that gets flipped tells him not to move. And this will continue. So now, if anyone paints this, they're not getting the two bonus points because Bob has already painted it. The hand gives you a free action of any type. The, this allows you to take one art supply off the top of the deck, and this allows you to add a card to your palette for free before you get your three actions. 
Now the round continues until either Bob gets and paints the final thing. At that point it ends, this will get taken off and a new one would come out. So this would come out and get flipped. So you can't see what's coming because you flip the pile over. And so now we have that. Or if any one player has painted all three of the features, it also stops and it, re it, it gets uh, refilled. That's pretty much the game. Everyone keeps taking turns and whoever gets chill first is the winner. All right, well there is Bob Ross, The Art of Chill. Now when I first heard about this game, it was like the day before Gen Con. It's one of those things you look at, you just kind of roll your eyes, like, oh, great, here comes a mass market piece of crap, you know? <laughs> and because I really liked the Bob Ross show. When I was a kid, I used to watch it all the time with my grandmother, um, and we spent a lot of time watching him. So I was really interested and hoping it would be good. So let's go through the things I liked about it. Amazing theme. Uh, it's so fun, you know, Bob Ross and the way that they integrated his real paintings into the game uh, of, of racing against Bob and the different names of the paints are exactly the same that you remembered him talking about. Uh, and it's just, the theme comes through so strong in this game. It, it's a fantastic point of it. Also reading the fun flavor text and the phrases like the happy little trees and the wondrous mountains and uh, you know uh, stuff like that. I just, I loved the, the, the extra attention, the detail that they put in there, especially on the event cards where they have little Bob's little sayings on them. Fantastic job there, it really draws you in. It really is much better than I anticipated. Now granted, I didn't expect too much, but it was much better than I anticipated. It's actually a good family level light game. Uh, I like the set collection, trying to get the right paints, trying to put them on the right palette. If you're painting uh, something with four more paints, you gotta make sure, you gotta use both palettes, make sure you don't have the colors you don't, that you can't have. So the set collection was interesting. Um, I like that you could go for the technique cards and you know get those, get you two, two uh, chill points, and then you get a point every time, it gives you some, a little bit more longer term strategy. Good job. Uh, and I like that it's sort of a, it's a race. It's a race to paint things fast. You're racing against the other players to get to certain things. You're racing against Bob. So depending on how fast Bob's moving and what other people have painted, that might change your choice on what you're trying to do. So I like that aspect of it. And I like to have a lot of paints, uh, paintings. So, you know, they're double-sided and you only go through about two or three of them in a game. So I like it. A lot of really good things here. I was, I was pleasantly surprised. Now let's get to the things I didn't like about the game. Um, it's a family weight game, and even though it's quite simple, there are a decent amount of choices that you possibly could do on your turn. Some are more obvious than others, but there are a lot of options, and there's no player aids. And for a game that's family weight, that's going to be in a mass market store, they really should have had a little player aid, or maybe even at the bottom of the, of the palette, they should have put the different possible actions. Um, and so uh, they missed the point there. Uh, Bob's movement does not scale well. In a four player game, he moves so fast because by the time it gets to your turn, the dice has been rolled three more times and half the time it's gonna be Bob. So you've got much less time to paint and try to beat him versus say a two player game where it's really lax. I would have rather them found, what do we want the game to feel like tension wise and race wise? And let's scale that with all the players. You use a D6 for this player count, maybe a D four or D eight with this player count. I would have liked to have seen them balance that out so that it felt consistent throughout. Cause I actually like having the more time with the two player game. You can spend more time uh, getting technique cards where in the, in the four player game, if you go for technique cards, uh, you know, it, it's, it's harder because you don't have as much time. You won't get as many turns before the paint changes. So I really wish they would have skilled this. Also, there's no first turn order bonus, meaning it says the game ends as soon as someone gets there. Well, whoever's the first player is gonna have an, have an ability, have an act, uh, you know, the advantage. So either they should have probably had it so that as soon as someone gets to the chill, whoever has the most points wins, or they should have given everyone after the, the first turn some type of bonus, whether it's an extra couple of art supplies or, or whatever. But so I wish that was, that, that was balanced. Now granted, this is a light family game, but at the same time, it's better than I expected, but it could have been even better, but I really love it. The theme really brings it home uh, and I'm definitely keeping it because it is a blast and everyone seems to love Bob Ross and it's fun to play. So it's getting a saxophone serenade, so let's induct it properly. This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com. <laughs>